Okay, this is a video for the Fearless Audio Hyper S uh, 12BA. Uh, is it 12 each shell or 6 per side? Usually they do correctly. They don't do that like it's 12, but actually it's 6 on each side. But it's such a small, it's hard to manage. And they put 12 in here, but when Fearless says there's 6 BAs, there's 6 BAs. When there's 5, there's 5. So there's, I guess, there's 12 in here. Um, I, I don't wreck this set. I know I said that, that this sounded pretty spectacular when I did my initial, but that's why I do reviews. Um, let me let me go ahead and explain kind of how this came about, because context is everything. Um, I listened to these and thought that they sounded mm, like they had a 3D kind of sense to it. It's hard to explain unless you've heard it. The Legend X has got something similar to that dynamic kind of a sense of space and this was giving me that but in a different than I'd heard it before and I thought immediately I thought Empire Ears not sure which version but I think I've heard a set like this so I went ahead went on to uh, Google and did image search and type, typed Empire Ears frequency and then looked at the images and then the images were not this but in the suggested one which is not on a tablet but on Google uh, like a PC for example if you clicked a black and white image out of a bunch of different stuff it would give you other black and white images down here it's like a associated type images it so it's drilling down and on the Empire ears graph when I clicked it it gave me a preview and then the top preview was this one or another one I think it was actually a different one and it was this one actually and this took me to HeadFi and was talking about uh, Spiralier's SE5U, which is like a $1,900 set. And the description of that set, done uh, later by by Critical, uh, and turned out to be an S plus or something um, ranking. I'm not sure, but I checked because I thought that that looks messed up his words about it were phasery fuck up and you know if you, i'm not dumping on him he's one of four channels that i have recommended on my youtube so if you look youtube top right those are channels i wreck one of the four even though he doesn't really hardly do them he's got kind of a humor and a this is a hobby this is stuff you like it or you don't the fucking graph don't lie they're variables between graphs to graphs but generally that's what you get and you can argue all the fuck you want and companies can fucking stick their fucking backs up and get defensive and all that so he puts up with that i respect that i link to him because mm, at the end of the day people lie graphs don't lie so the worst part of critical's whole deal is critical's human nature because he's a human but his graphing equipment's awesome worst part about me is uh my emotional and my boasting about stuff that i love but that's who i am that's who he is on the good effect is he's the most experienced grapher uh, and he's got a huge library and if you're into that then you gotta lean on that so I stumbled upon him by chance because that other graph was maybe done by somebody else but he had commented on it and then I thought what does he think went looked at it S ranking so we got two graphs that look if you mark it where this peak it starts to rise they're both at 1k and the plateau is about the same distance and the massive drop falls to about the same point and then the the rise to the secondary peak is about the same point so we're looking at something very similar at the very least tuned very similar and this is loved by many so I thought well, okay you know, I, I was impressed when I first heard it. Let's turn ourselves around here for a second. And then the rubber hit the road, and I started listening to my stuff. Um, when Doves Cry, the very beginning where he's doing the 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 vocal tuner, like that, yow, yow, like uh, Peter Frampton did. Uh, um, do you feel like I do? You know, uh, I think T-Pain uses it in hip-hop now a lot, or he used to. Um... Peter Frampton famously did it, and he's doing it in this track just a little bit, and the grind sound of it was a little, 
little different than what I was used to. Um, Highway to Hell. That's a big picture. I wish they were all that big. Highway to Hell was uh, very good on this. And there was nothing that seemed lacking or um, overdone. I thought that this track sounded good. This is also vinyl rip, so I can hear the needle as it glides on the dead wax between tracks. So at this point, I was feeling, yeah, this is really good. Then I got to this track. That wasn't even worth clicking. It's so small. Um, and this is Piano check and also uh, there's a hi-hat that I'm just super familiar with and the hi-hat sounded back clearly back and this was my first like okay um, that's not ideal because it's a fundamental part of it we got a piano it's not a really complicated track uh, the piano was slightly back and the the hi-hat seemed uh, incomplete can't find my way home Th this is a huge symbol crash for me. I talk about it all the time. It's a splash or it's a crash. This would be a correct crash, but a quiet crash. Not not that loud. Quietly crashing. And that's not the way you would hear it in a home system or any other thing. So this is when I started to fall away mentally. Like, oh shit, this is not going to turn out the way that I thought it might. This is... Uh, like a dual song, uh, four play long time, where there's a lot of uh, keyboards and uh, Tom Schultz is using, I think, a slide up his guitar and then they're simulating like, just sounds like space. Look at the picture. They were all about you know, space and uh, so they're, they're, they're doing that. I heard this live, by the way, F fucking awesome. And th that point sounded fine. It sounded like I could catch the micro details, but when it switches from foreplay into long time, there's a. Uh, uh, the vocals just were right up on me. I actually had turned up the volume a little to catch the micro details, and that was fine. It sounded normal, and then that increased volume put the vocals right up on me, and then I had to put the volume down. So. I realized that my catching the micro details was maybe related to my increasing the volume um, so that I could get it and then basically that's not how people would probably regularly listen to it. Uh, this is Ripple by the Grateful Dead. If you're a deadhead this set might be great because vocals and uh, like acoustics sound fine. Uh, uh, Jerry Garcia and group uh, who are basically talk singing with you know they're not yelling. Um, sounded great on this. Very, very nice. A departure from what is usually out there. With a... Mm, it's different. But it's not odd different. It's just different. Sounds good. I like it on this track. This is basically where the dream died for me. Um, instead of being like a Jerry Garcia, this is actually a man and woman that are... I said in a previous video that I think the woman that was in the video was actually a Broadway woman. And she, I checked Wikipedia. She, fucking, I nailed that. Must, I think I saw an interview on VH1 a long time ago. Um, and he, he, he did Broadway too, I believe. And th their vocal abilities are incredible. And But in this track, they're basically getting into a man-woman argument on the microphone. So their volume is very high. And it was quite loud on this set. Um, vocals were in my face, as they say, and that was really when Steely Dan, do it again, sounded fine. It's a slow, methodical, the, the hi-hats that exist sounded a little bit subdued, wasn't ideal, but it wasn't that bad. Um, Violent Femmes, the opening bass line and the acoustic guitar sounded good, and then when the vocals came in, um... Didn't sound on me, sounded slightly back, which was just weird because the tuning shows that the vocals be forward. So, very mixed bag. For this price, I can't wreck it. Um, I'm sure people are going to watch this and, you know, the people that make this and bummed. You got, this is like the third expensive version from this company that I'm not wrecking. And at some point, somebody who's, you know, building this has got to be thinking... Does this guy have the ears for the expensive stuff? I, I think I do. I just, I'm listening for hi-hats and I'm, I'm not catching them. Or the hi-hats are way back. 
someone else who buys this is going to catch that if that's their thing. And by talking about a hi-hat, I'm talking about a fundamental, basic instrument in rock music, um, hip-hop, the roots, uh, you know, classical music. I don't know what instrument would be set back, but I can't wreck it. The saving grace is that there's another 12BA in my possession that I was switching while I was listening to this. Sadly, it's expensive, but it sounded... Um, it sounded great so